Hi scholars, let's look at Teak 4.4c. I can represent the product of two two-digit numbers using arrays, area models, or equations including perfect squares through 15 by 15. So product is the answer to a multiplication problem. So we're talking about representing it, representing the answer to a multiplication problem, and it's two two-digit numbers. So like 10 times 10, 11 times 11, 12 times 12, using arrays, which are the, the rows and the columns, area models, which is very similar to that, or equations, including perfect squares through 15 by 15. I will explain in detail what a perfect square is in this video. And um, I'm also going to show you how to find factors in order to understand what a perfect square is. So let's get started. It's important that you understand what an array is and perfect squares and factors and products and things like that. So I am going to show you how to make arrays. And in those arrays, I will show you perfect squares. And then from there, we'll talk about area models and equations. So let's say you're told to make arrays that represent 36. Represent means show. So if you don't know what an array is, array is kind of like a setup of numbers or of objects. That's a faster way of multiplying. So like I know that there's three rows and there's four in each row. So I'm going to do four times three and that's going to equal 12. Okay, so instead of doing this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know to do 3 times 4 and that equals 12. Okay, so if I were told from my teacher to find arrays that make 36, I would do the t-chart method and find the factors. Now if you don't know what factors are, they are the numbers that when they're multiplied by each other, they make the product. So 4 and 3 are considered factors, and 12 is considered the product. Okay, so let's start here. I always start with 1. That is the most convenient thing, and you go in order. So 1 times 36 equals 36. These are factors. 2 times 18 equals 36. The reason I know 2 works is because this is an even number, and I know it's an even number because 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8 in the 1's place makes it an even number. Next, I'm going to try 3. I know 3 works because the digital root of 36 is 9, and if the digital root is 3, 6, or 9, then 3 can go into that number. These are little tricks that I teach my students to help cut down time. So, um, 3 times 12 equals 36. Okay, now 4. 4 times 9 is 36. And the reason I know that 9 would work is because, again, the digital root is 9. And if the digital root is 9, 9 goes into it. 5. 5 does not go into 36 because 36 has a 6 in the 1's place. And multiples of 5 only have 0 or 5. 6. 6 times 6 equals 36. 7, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. Nope, that won't work. Now I'm going to go to 8. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. 8 doesn't work either. 9. Oh, look, 9 is on the right side, which means that's a stopping point. These are all the factors of 36. Now I'm going to create the arrays. And what I normally have my students do is I have them get out grid paper or centimeter paper or graph paper or something and I have them cut it out. So like they would make a 1 by 36. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. When you have 35 lines, then you have 36 squares. Um, so that one's done. Now I'm going to make a 2 by 18. So that's a 2 by 18. Now I'm going to show you the 3 by 12, which I actually have. What did I do with it? Oh dear, did I lose it? No, here it is. Okay, so 12 by 3 or a 3 by 12, it's the same thing. You can turn it this way and call it a 12 by 3, turn it this way, call it 3 by 12. That's why you see it both ways. Then we have a 4 by 9 or a 9 by 4, however you want to see it. 
Then we have a six by six. Okay, so here is where the teak comes in. If you notice, these are all rectangular arrays. This one is a square array. It's a six by six, which means 36, because it makes a square array, it's a six by six, 36 is considered a square number. It makes a square array, it's considered a square number. So in your teak, it says including perfect squares through 15 by 15. They're talking about the 11 by 11, 12 by 12, 13 by 13, 14 by 14, 15 by 15, representing it in this and the area models. So let me show you some um, perfect squares. I don't have 13 by 13, 14 by 14, or 15 by 15, but I do have the 11 by 11. Here's also a 10 by 10. So this 10 by 10 is 100. 11 by 11 is 121. And 12 by 12 is 144. So these are considered perfect squares. And so these are arrays that would represent it. Okay, so not only do you know how to find factors of a number and the possible arrays, you also now know what a perfect square is. So now from there, we're gonna move on to the two two-digit by numbers. So like, we're gonna look at like 15 times 21, 27. We're gonna look at like 13 by 13 and things like that. And 11 by 11 which means 121 is a square number. This is known as a square number because it makes a square array. 11, it's gonna be an 11 by 11, the dimensions. So this is what an 11 by 11 looks like. Okay, so let's look at a visual of an 11 by 11. I'm actually gonna maybe do that, that would help. And we're gonna break it apart we're going to break it apart to where you can see four different sections. Now, 11 times 11, we're going to break apart that 11. If you know the distributive property, we're going to break up 11 to 10 plus 1. And we're going to break that one up to 10 plus 1 also. Okay, so here is my 11 by 11. And right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right here, that's 10 and then that's 1. So I'm going to break that apart, okay, on this side. So that's 10 plus 1. Notice I kept the 10 here and the 1 here. Then on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Break it to 10 plus 1. Notice now this section, and then we have this section, and then we have that tiny little section there, and then a section here. So just so you can um, just so you can kind of get a better idea, I'm gonna okay, that highlighter does not work. New plan. I'm gonna use a green pen. Okay. So we have four sections now. So this section is a 10 by 10, which is 100. This section here, there's a one, and then this side is 10. And if you don't know that, that's here. So a one by 10 is 10, okay? This one is also a one by 10, because if that's 10, then that's 10, okay? And then this one is a one by one. That's why there's only one piece in there. So you have 100 plus 10 plus 10 plus 1. 100 plus 10 equals 110, plus another 10 is 120, plus 1 is 121. So if I were to represent that, I mean show the different partial products, it would be 100 plus 10 plus 10 plus 1. So 121. So there's a way you can represent the product of 11 times 11 using an array, which would be this, or an area model, which is this. This is sections broken up using distributive property or partial product. 
and then the equation would be 11 times 11 equals 121. Okay, let's look at another square number since it's in the teak and it says all the way through 15 by 15. So I thought let's go ahead and use this as an example. So 225 is considered the square number. 15 and 15 multiplied with each other, these are considered the factors of 225. So let's look at an array of a 15 by 15. Now, if you don't know what 15 times 15 equals, like if you don't know the square number to it, like the product, you can easily just multiply and get 225. So here is the array of 15 by 15. Now what we're going to do is we're going to break it apart into area models, different area models. So let me just zoom in kind of like that. Okay, so we're going to do... One, two, three, four, five. We're going to do a 10. Whoa, that was a terrible line. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to do 10 plus 5. Because when you break up 15 in uh, expanded form for distributive property, it's 10 plus 5. Okay, so looking at this. So this is going to be 10 plus 5, and this side's going to be 10 plus 5. Now I'm going to color these sections in. This is dark green. That's not quite cooperating. Here is blue. Here is red. And here's lime green. Okay, so a 10 by 10. Now you're going to look at each section on its own. 10 times 10 is 100, because I know it's a 10 by 10. Because if you look at the array, like just this array, that's a 10 by 10, so that's 100. This is 5. This side here is 10. So 5 times 10 is 50. This over here is 5. This side over here is 10. 5 times 10 is 50. This over here is 5, because remember, 10 plus, 10 plus 5. And then this is also 10 plus 5. Remember, whatever's going on over here, it's going on over here. So this is a 5 by 5. That equals 25. So now let's look at our sections. 100 plus 50 plus 50 plus 25. So when I add them up, I get 225. This can be known as partial products or area models. Let me show you what this would look like if you didn't have grid paper. It kind of ties in with other teaks, and that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and show it because... I mean, sometimes, you know, you're not going to be able to check with grid paper, but you can certainly draw an area model. So you can think of 15 by 15 like this, okay? And you can think, well, 10 plus 5 equals 15, 10 plus 5 equals 15. And if you're strategically thinking, you know, obviously 10 is bigger than 5, so you can kind of plan it that way. So this is a 10 by 10. So that would be 100. This is a 5 by 10. So that would be 50. Remember, if this is 10, then this is 10. This is a 5. This is 10 because this is 10. So it's a 5 by 10, so that's 50. This is 5 because this is 5. This is 5 because this is 5. So a 5 by 5 is 25. So add them up. 100 plus 50 plus 50 plus 25 equals 200. 25. So we talked about the array before I split this and colored it. That was a 15 by 15. Now this is an area model. This is an area model without grid paper, you know, partial products. And the equation could be is 15 times 15 equals 225.